What's up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about <gasps> Ching Demons Inc. by Clayton Snyder. So, guys, this is an urban fantasy tale. Um, realistically, I think that fans of Constantine and Sandman Slim, maybe even people that are fans of Harry Dresden, are really going to like what Clayton Snyder has written here. It's a lot of goddamn fun, it's fast paced, and it's a quick read. So it's something that I'm definitely going to be recommending to slow and struggling readers. Let's get into it. All right, so here in Demons, Inc., we will follow a character known as Jack Nix. Now, Jack is an interesting character. Like I said earlier, people that like, like maybe Harry Dresden or Sandman Slim or, you know, uh, John Constantine are really going to be able to kind of get behind Jack Nix. Now, he is a very interesting character. He has tattoos, ones that have bound demons to him that he can kind of call out when he needs, you know, in a sticky situation. One demon really comes in handy when he needs to call on some strength. And the other demon comes in handy when he needs to do a little schmoozing, you know? A little seducing, if you will. Now, when the story starts out, we see that Jack is taking a job because he needs money. Now, this job that he takes is probably one that he should just leave alone, but he does not. And this is something that we'll kind of just kind of understand is like, oh, that's a complete Jack Nix move. Anyway, this job will find Jack way out of his depth. He's going to be in over his head, and he's going to need help. And God damn it, if he doesn't have some good old friends. One that I love, the street witch named Ivy. And these two together are some of the most dynamic. It's it's a, just a great relationship that is just so enjoying to read. I mean, this, this book is a wild ride, but I got to say, guys, these two together are just so much fucking fun. Now, the book is fairly short, so I'm going to kind of keep that summary and everything really nice and tight and just right there. Let's kind of dive into what I feel that Clayton Snyder did really well here throughout this story. One thing being he manages to kind of hit multiple tones. This is an urban fantasy story, and it's going to feel like an urban fantasy story, uh, but there is going to be times where he's going to slap you with a little bit of horror, and there is like some scenes in here that do just kind of make your the hair on your arm stand up that fear the icy chill of fear starts to set into your bones a little bit you know and that's awesome that he can kind of flick it and it doesn't feel like two different books or anything like that it's it does it seamlessly kind of changes tone and then back into the in, into itself again another thing with this tone i would say and this is very clayton snyder so far as out of the stuff that i have read of his it's funny it's funny as shit. Like, you're gonna laugh, probably from beginning to end, except for maybe in these moments where he's slapping you with some really scary shit. Next, I want to talk about the characters. We'll start with Jack. Jack Nix is a great character. Like I said earlier, if you are a person that really likes uh, Sandman Slim or John Constantine, you're gonna be easily able to get behind Jack Nix. He's a lot of fun. He's sarcastic and cynical and just, you know, he's got a lot of smart assery coming at you. His banter is great, especially when it's bouncing off of Ivy. Another cool thing about Jack is those tattoos and his demons, right? So he has this like struggle, inner struggle sort of, so to speak, with these demons and trying to kind of keep them in check. But I love how it portrays a man that's kind of at odds with himself you kind of get this feeling that even without the demons, the Jack Nix would still be plagued with a lot of shit going on inside. Now, flipping over to Ivy, this character, like I said, I really, really enjoy Ivy's parts, especially when you get, like, them together and just the witty banter back and forth. It feels so real. It feels like a very real relationship, and it is funny now after having a discussion with Clayton Snyder knowing that uh, some of this is based off of just really like him and his wife. And that I'm telling you guys, if you read this, you're going to feel that. You're going to feel just it's genuine even when it's being super smart ass. Like <laughs> it's it will play through to the reader. And I think people are going to love this relationship. The next thing I want to talk about real quick is just the amount of imagination that kind of goes into this book. And I think that a lot of people will see that and not just the imaginative dialogue and the interesting things that might come out of people's mouths, but just also things that are going to be on display. One of my personal favorites is a crucifix that was like moving, talking, bleeding. 
it's a small part, guys, but just this kind of imagery really hit me hard, and I laughed. I just loved it. It was fucking great. Like, this is stuff. I just, it sticks with me. I'll probably always remember this fucking crucifix <laughs> till the day I die, and I love that. Now I want to talk about some stuff where I could see people, like, having issues, what they would take issue with in the book. And I think a lot of this is going to come from people that are m maybe trying to hold this up to a different kind of book standard. You got to understand what this thing is, guys. It's it's a light read. It's meant to take you from point A to point B, give you some laughs and some chuckles, you know, gather your interest, bring you in, and then release you out back into the reading wild. You know, <laughs> this is not a book that's a thousand goddamn pages that's built to be as realistic as possible or anything like that, okay? So if you understand this book is just a nice little chunk of a good time, well, guess what? You're going to have a good time. But if you keep trying to make it something way more than it's not, well, of course, you're going to pick it apart. So first thing being the magic system. Clayton Snyder does not, not take a whole lot of time to talk about the magic system or anything like that. There is obviously the magic and it's on display and, and in work, but... You know, we don't even really know, understand how Jack even really got the powers and stuff. There's some stuff kind of alluded to. But yes, there's not a huge amount of fleshing out. I don't give a shit, but I guarantee you there's going to be somebody out there that's complaining because they're trying to hold it up to something that's like made by Brent Weeks or Brandon Sanderson. And that is not what this fucking book is, guys. So just know going in that the magic is soft as all hell. It's soft as fucking cookie dough. But it's pretty goddamn sweet. Another thing I could see people kind of uh, maybe having trouble with is going to just be the way that the book is formatted. We do a lot of flashbacking throughout the story. And I know just as somebody that reads and reviews and knows others, it's just like, guys, flashbacks are something that usually always get tagged. It's just they're really hard to pull off. And honestly, I... I enjoyed the way that he displays them here in this book, and I think he does a great job of distinguishing when it is a flashback, but regardless, there's lots of flashbacks here, and I could see people kind of taking issue with that. It's just the way, it's like the nature of the flashback in literature. Now, as far as my two cents for the slow and the struggling, like I said earlier in the beginning of this video, guys, absolutely, Demon's Ink is for you. It is a fast paced fun ride it is engaging it will grab your attention and keep it from beginning to end this is a very important part of reading when you're first starting out you need things that grab your attention and keep them from beginning to end so you just don't fall out right i mean it, you're already struggling so this kind of book is just there to help you along the way i tell you I can't read this kind of story is just the stuff that I will herald very high for you guys. Okay, so please give it a shot. Uh, it's definitely worth your time. You can finish this thing and feel accomplished. Start gathering stuff under your belt. One of the things I do feel is good for you about this book is those flashbacks. It's going to be good for you guys to start maybe branching out and getting this kind of stuff under your belt. And like I said earlier, Clayton Snyder does a great job of distinguishing when it is a flashback and he's going to throw plenty at you. So I think that this book would be a perfect challenge for that kind of material for you guys. OK, all right, guys, as always, thanks for spending some time down here at the channel and to Clayton Snyder. A kadoosh. Two thumbs up, bro. You fucking crazy madman. I'm digging your shit. I can't wait to get into what else you got. I think Cold West might be next. A kadoosh, kadoosh, kadoosh. We'll, we'll see. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you for stopping by and spending a little time here at the channel. Um, I am pretty much done telling you to like and subscribe. You can fucking do that if you feel froggy, okay? Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, it is what it is. This is where I'm at in life. All right? All right. You know what fucking time it is? Purr.